Global TV says certain kind of friend we no cape and some informal friend we love like we ain't global bona fie friend and bona tape we ain't global we no promote them we no support them look at them on a cheek come here represent for we ain't global TV check it <laughs> It is Sunday morning, an unusual time for me to be here. But while many of us were socializing or sleeping last night, news stories were breaking all over the place. The dirty 30 strike again, this time at the heart of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. What will the scatter be over this week going forward? after receiving seize and desist. New stories are also breaking in the Middle East as last night we saw direct confrontation between the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and the Israeli idea. Star Wars played out over the skies of Israel last night. Good morning and welcome to the Global Television Group. Thank you all for joining us, developing stories all over the place is the gate of hell for world war three opened last night with iran's retaliatory attack after the bombing of their embassy in damascus what a bang around powerful planet but the dirty 30 just almost a month before demonstration ruled with the pen they struck again, and we are waiting. I have reached out to many people from the Jamaica, from the Global Jamaican Diaspora Council, those unregistered one. I've reached out to many of them for an interview. Shauna Chin was one of the people I reached out to. Miss Chin was the only person of all those who I reached out to that respond and promised to call me back. Nathaniel Pete is one that I reached out to for the UK South. Um, Dr. McBean is one that I reached out to for the Europe Caucus. And Miss Fletcher for the UK North. I'm still waiting respond because this is huge and this is a developing story. It is once again Johnson Johnson versus the Rattigan. What will it be this time? Will the government initiate a sit down? There is so much, so much to talk about. Ashton, dirty 30. So much to talk about this morning, an unusual morning for me to be here. But thank you all very much for turning up on a Saturday morning. Good morning to everyone on YouTube, the Twitch. And the ex, good morning to my community of party and my family members. Good morning to all my moderators, my platform membership holders and subscribers, viewers, commenters, and supporters. Good morning and welcome. Rosemary Edwards, good morning. Sunshine, good morning. Beverly Edwards, good morning. Natalia Freeman, good morning. Jason Kane, good morning. Marcia Thomas, good morning, good morning. Yvonne Johnson, good morning. Gloria Morris, good morning. Shauna Smith, VCA Smith, good morning. Audrey Robinson, good morning. Diana Atkinson, good morning. Ronnie Harlan, good morning. Pamela McNeil, good morning, good morning. Winston Dawkins, Jamaican Carlos, how are you, bro? 
Good morning and welcome to Dirty 30 Carlos. Struck again. Monica Wills, good morning. Good morning, Andrea Lilith Lockerbie, good morning. Christopher, good morning. Colleen Richards, good morning. Patricia Williams, Andrea. Georgia Dennis, Lilith Lockerbie, Parry Maria Ali, good morning. Tina Moore, good morning. Tash, good morning. Good morning. Del Dolores Logan, good morning. Carla Hayes. Simone Dixon, Nifty Friends, good morning. JC, good morning and welcome. It is a pleasant Sunday afternoon. It is in London. It is bright and sunny outside, but I've taken a bit of time out of going to the park, which I will do after, just to look at the development of last night. We saw the launch of the 10th biannual conference for the Jamaican Diaspora, the Global Jamaican Diaspora Council. Last moon, Lauren Bar uh, Barrett. But these people have been operating for 20 years. Mystic Raindrop TV, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome. Unregistered. Even when the government, Colleen Humphreys, grab it up in their foreign ministry, using foreign minister to chair and spearhead it, a hostile takeover. A hostile takeover was done. Now the question to ask, what is it going forward for their major conference in Montego Bay? Chittown Vibes, Chittown Vibes, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome. Ask yourself what it is going forward for their investor conference they were going to have in June. Will they now have to sit down with the Dirty 30? Or will there be legal challenges going forward? But what are the grounds, JP? that the government and the Jamaican diaspora, the, the Global Jamaican Diaspora Council, what would be their legal footing? Anybody can register a company if, if it's unregistered. What was your purpose for operating for 20 years? 20 years without any formality. What is the diaspora and the government hiding? My questions are, I don't know. Ratigan and others will have to answer the question. Can the work of the unregistered Global Diaspora Council be audited by the now registered Global Diaspora Council taken over by the Diaspora Crime Prevention and Intervention Task Force? I'm sure there are going to be lots of ramifications going forward for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the Diaspora Conference planned in June in Jamaica, as well as there is the upcoming demonstration, which is going to put yet more pressure on this government, the diasporans, diasporans has taken over the administration of their affairs from the government. Is the government, is the ministry now answerable to the registered Global Diaspora Council, or will they continue to jump and hoot the high horse? They can't use that name now, 20 years. Need to look. But my question, um, Marielle, can they be audited? Can Ratigan and the others call upon them for like their financial administration that they've been doing over the years, money collected, money turned over to the government? I'm just wondering, that is something that they will have to answer. 
But to you Jamaicans at home, what we are trying to show you is that you have a voice. You still have people power. There is still time to unite. There is still time to come together to take back your country. In the dead of night, a small group has taken over. A small group has taken over the Global Diaspora Council. What will the response of Alando Terrellon, Kamina Johnson Simit, and all their partners who we saw the other day queuing up to get a cut of the investment? or get a cut into diaspora's pocket by way of the diaspora investing in more of their products and services. This is a shocking news. This is a shocking news, and it is something that everyone should be discussing because this shows that our government and the people within the Europe and North America, Africa region as well, who said to be a part of this global diaspora council, who were you representing? When have you had a meeting in the UK? People like Pete who control the UK South. When was there ever a publicity drive to us in the UK to say, this is who we are and these are the issues that we can assist with. This is the services that we provide for people in diaspora. I didn't know of these unregistered, publicized, tech down on a website, that website at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, the Global Diaspora Council with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Forest Foreign Trade splattered all over it. They are going to give you time to remove all those things. <coughs> the pen Jamaicans, your voice Jamaicans, it is powerful. Only though, if you use it. Only if you use it. The pen now go sit down in your jaw or tick in your stomach or in your head and become active. It must be in your hand working. Your voice must not just be on your veranda or in your backyard or whispering to your friends. Your voice must be shouting in the street corners and in the town centers. Let government know that I see you, I hear you, and I'm watching. Imagine Jamaicans coming on board with a show of strength that the diaspora is showing, particularly those in the North America region. They are saying, we're taking back our affairs in the diaspora. And by extension, we want to take back as people our affairs in our country, Jamaica. Take example from this, my people. You don't have to sit down. Where is all my queues? You don't have to sit down and be treated brutally by government. As the People's National Party campaign said, time come, Violet Watson. Time come for Jamaicans to take back their affairs from crooked criminal politicians.
politicians who rather than doing the job we elect and pay them to do they're on beaches having fun uh, loading jugs boat and arresting jug dealers <laughs> Dr. Tufton obviously have some fetish with Western Jamaica beaches because it was on Western Jamaica beach that Dr. Tufton in the dead of night arrest drug dealers. Me coming from St. Elizabeth, no say, Treasure Beach. From Treasure Beach come all the way down to the Parity Beach coastline. I will own a St. Elizabeth business people and politician load jugs boat. We so know all the time. Don't mean so we're going to stay silent forever. Don't mean so one day we never go grow up and start talk about it and don't afraid to talk about it. Yes. On a St. Elizabeth politician, we know on a, on a jug boat loaded. Me see it with my eye. Marine Cummings. Shauna Smith, BCA Smith, how are you? But is the people of Jamaica ready to take back their country? Or they going to just sit down and wait for the diaspora to just fight for them continuously? So you can't just leave it to the diaspora only. Look at how effective the Florida protest was. And in the middle of that before another demonstration. The organization which found Wendy, we hear how them a walk around and quarrel over a logo. Jamaican. Jamaican. I think I, I, I hope I pronounce it properly. Them are operate unregistered for so long. Now that they've now that they're taken over by diasporans, will the government work with this group? Or will the government scramble to find a new heading to come under in order to keep their conference on route for September um, for June? Or will this collapse? the whole function, Gene Wright, Pamela Okolo, JP. This is major development. If I did people business, you'd have said Glean and the whole of them shaman ranger and the whole of them are talk about it. This morning is Sunday morning, Glean. It should be a big story. Hmm? Sunday morning is a morning for big stories. So far, I'm not seeing nothing yet. Can't say what I never hear. Because from where the everything gone over Mr. Ratigan and um, them lot, there is publication. So we're giving you all time to see how the publicity are going to go on upon this takeover, Michelle Clark. Let's see. How now go run the publicity upon this takeover? But you all cannot hide because I'm sure Kamina Johnson Smith will have to answer or react to, a, to this move from the dirty 30. Who hmm? not spread Iran business? Who not Gleena? Who not spread Iran and Israel business? 
our story, that story last night, the global diaspora story broke before the retaliatory strike from Iran last night. So why we don't have that the story around on and around the big takeover that happened last night? Well, media hosts don't like to run story that embarrasses the government. Who are media hosts? Oh, them run behind ultra sound and wedding wedding dress trail media houses. But over here on social media, we are going to use it to ring like a school bell going forward. Especially right up to next month demonstration, Anthony R, Arlene Benbo. Especially right up until next month demonstration. Right up into the conference you've planned. We are going to continue to hold you and rub you all over your face with it because this is a major development a organization operated for 20 years without formality operated on behalf of the jamaican government soliciting money from the diaspora and others on behalf of the jamaica government were there any illegal activities carried out by the unregistered Global Jamaican Diaspora Council? Millicent Jones, can they be audited? But if they don't exist on paper, they probably don't, doesn't even have an office base. Yubuntu, how are you? But we should not let this argument look like it's just a blip. This is a major development. And we are waiting for the Foreign Affairs Ministry to respond to last night's development. We're also waiting for a contact from Ms. Shauna Chin. I don't know if others will reach back out to me. But so far, Ms. Chan, Ms. Shauna Chin has responded to my request for a comment on the hostile takeover or an interview. However, because I want to hear their side of the story and how they feel now that they cannot use the brand or the logo anymore, which that logo had became a bone of contention since the first Dirty 30 March, Sharon Robinson. So I have questions I want to put to them and say, trust me, trust me, I think they might have emergency meeting all this Sunday morning, where they would have the, where they lie at the thief in church, that town where they hope a rich Stella Morris. All of them would you figure Stella Maris to go show off and show the big envelope. They are scrambling and running for cover. When Terry Lang checked out his hands, so he must have said Jeremy and Junior blood can it. He must have said the knife adopt with his hand a chimble how him shock. And the uh Brem, good evening, good morning. Whichever side of the world you are, welcome to Global Television. They must be shaking and quaking in their boots at the moment because this has drive a rusty nail into their diaspora conference. This has also rammed a rusty nail into Fabian Anderson JP, into their diaspora cash cow where they can solicit money and push it sideways so so it not go through the flop to get registered can they be audited do they owe an explanation to the registered body
what a load of conundrum. I'm sure. I'm sure there will be developments throughout this week. And I'm waiting patiently to hear Johnson, John, Johnson Simmit, Alando Terrellon, Abina Sarkodi, how are you? Mary Messenger TV. And the belligerent, nervous wreck of a minister of misinformation and spluttering. I'm waiting to hear from them. I'm waiting to hear what their excuses, what their frustration, what their lies and their misinformation will be. Or will it just be subtle anger, rage? But how are you going to go forward with your conference come June? What banner will it be under? Let me fix your name. The Global Diaspora Investment Forum. Write it. Take a pen, Johnson, and write it down. The Global Diaspora Investment Forum. As I go, no, one more word needed. The Global Diaspora Networking Investment Forum. Write down that acronym for me, one or no. The Global, no, we could fix it up. The Global Jamaican Diaspora Network Investment Forum. Or if they want to call it conference or anything of this sort, but the Jama the Global Jamaica Network Investment Forum, Gwendolyn Scott. So see if we can make up one new name quick, but make up the name that reflects what you do. Sonia Smichael, good morning, good afternoon. Make sure the name of your organization is reflective of what you do. Milk in the desk for <laughs> Carlos, I could make up one new name for them, no? They need help. Help me make up a new name. They need, remember, they don't have time. I went out. I mid. With a mid April, you know, a 30 day April, or 30 days of April. Yeah. So today are the 14. Let with a mid April now. Mama Nita, Mr. Flex, how are you? With your mid April. So two weeks left in April. Hold on me. And they have. So how much week in a June? Before their conference, about two weeks in a June. So roughly say eight weeks. Them need help, Carlos. Them need help. Remember, I said them are labor, right? Them dunce and them slow and them backwards. They take them time. Remember, if it if them are 30 years now, this is not just their fault, though. Let's be honest. The People's National Party, we don't have question for answer to. Where on the day I get out of it. Why Uno never want to regularize him? But was it in the ministry, Darren Daly? This I have to look further into. I'm not sure of that. Was it in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs before this present government? Do you know Carlos? Do you know Debbie or anyone? Beat and, how did Peter and teach down at church? Do you know how for how long this organization has been affiliated with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade? But the over 20 years of them operating, they have been dealing with both government. Yes, there is a name change somewhere along the road. It was 
I think the Diaspora Advisory Board or something like that, but it's the same body. The name change, no matter, 20 year plus, and no formality or regularize, regularizing yourself on paper. But you have this bright shine all over the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, chaired by the minister, the state minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Alonda Terry Long. Genesis owner crooks and criminals. What were you sidelining and sidestepping the United States why you have not registered this organization in the United States in 20 years? Those of you elected, unelected, selected, unelected people. Hmm? They kind of selected by on a labor friend them on a nepotistic friend them. If you sit on a council representing us, a council we don't know about, and a group we knew nothing about prior to Rupert Francis, Rattigan, Carlos, and the whole of them coming together with this Diaspora Intervention Task Force, EM. Good morning, good afternoon. You have lost another argument and another fight. From where do you, from the demonstration, from the dirty, dirty demonstration, Una been hissy fitting over logo. No, you can't talk about it anymore. You're going to have to take it down. You're going to have to take down your website, is a holder. Isn't it a crying shame and embarrassment on this government and its diaspora affiliators? Working in the shadow, God knows. What sort of shady dealings they've been involved in over the 20 years? Criminals. But wanna be afraid, Darty Brown. Be afraid. Be very afraid mr ratigan knows the law not only that he knows the law he knows how to use it and people like mr ratigan have the government running for cover mr ratigan on mouth talk like nothing mr ratigan is actually taking it to the government by making a lot of freedom of information requests lawsuits as we've seen before even though them are telling him not have no standing. The Diaspora Intervention and Crime Prevention Task Force is a force to be reckoned with, and the Jamaican government is fully, Rena, how are you? Fully aware of that. Mm -hmm. Fully aware of that. Things like this, I have a ball for murder. A government in collapse from parliamentary to diaspora affair. You just couldn't make it up. This government collapse came on the 26th of February with an election which we are yet to know who won the election, but certainly the sitting government came out of the election terribly. Moving into a budget where the government was covered to the point where they have to run for cover. 
melting down the parliament, the life and mystery that came from the wife of the prime minister and her cohorts after has brought our parliament into disrepute, prostrate on its face. And now the diaspora has landed a blow, one straight across Johnson Johnson's face. Rattigan will just not leave Kamina Johnson alone, Monica Hawthorne. Now onto the recent development in the Middle East, some would call it West Asia, whichever you want to call it. The striking thing I found with Western leaders, it's how double town they can be. You cannot support Russia's aggression, but you must support Israel's aggression. For decades, Israel has been a thorn in the side of Iran, aggression after aggression. Since the October last year war in Palestine, the Israeli Defense Force continuously holds aggression to Iran. About two weeks ago, they bombed the Iranian embassy in Damascus. And that set the tone to the Star Wars true love. Good morning, good afternoon. Set the tone to the Star Wars we saw played out over Israel last night. The issue here, Vivian Hamilton, if the Americans cannot control their Rottweiler in the Middle East, this thing is going to spiral out of control. Last night, we see a concerted attack where it's for the first time in history, a direct confrontation between the state of Israel and the state of Iran. But it wasn't just that last night. We have the Houthis from Yemen flinging in at the same time. We have those from the Iran, um, from the Iraq and Syria side flinging in at the same time. We also have Hezbollah from the Lebanon side flinging in at the same time. It was a concerted attack last night. One that America thought was just going to be a bluff because America thinks because of its show of strength in the Middle East, Iran was going to suffer in silence continuously. Iran has finally spoken. What will this be? What will the global ramification of last night's Star Wars be? It's an oil-rich zone. Already in uh, Iran, people are scrambling to the pump. If this spills over into a regional war, if this is the gate of World War III opened last night, then this could spell disastrous for a lot of us globally. Will there be any other big players coming in? What will China and Russia response be, particularly Russia? It could be a devastating development. The pinch we have been feeling with the hike in food price and um, what you might call it. Food price and inflation. This can be something that comes on worse than we saw in the Russia Ukraine war. This development could spell disaster. The truth, though, Britain and America, or Europe and America, needs to control their bully. You cannot ask Iran to restrain itself 
Iran, who has been aggressed by Israel for over 30 years. Iran and Israel, who has been bombing Iranian targets for the last six months. It is unfair of you, America and Europe, to ask Iran to show constraint. Iran has correctly invoked Article 51 of the UN Charter, legitimate self-defense in international or diplomatic law. The embassy of a country is a sovereign land. The embassy of a country is sovereign land, meaning the Jamaican consulate in New York is sovereign territory for Jamaica. Not when you step into that building, you are not in New York. You are in Jamaica. That's how embassies work. So once you attack an embassy, you by extension attack the homeland country. And that is why Iran is within its right to get into direct confrontation with the state of Israel. America must leash its bulldog. America must leash its bulldog. And at the same time, America is provoking war with China, with the Japan and the Philippines. This America, this depleted, diving in the shadows economy, America, is provoking a World War III on this planet. America must pull its bulldog back for peace to be in the region and in the world. Andrea Freeman, good morning and welcome. America must pull its bulldog back. This, if America pushes it, if America doesn't contain his, its bulldog, it could spell nasty. The be-all and end-all power that the West and Israel think they poses over the world. Russia and China say no. We're living in a multipolar world now where the United States is not the only hegemon here. You're not the only big military here. You're not the only big economy here. America must stop provoking wrath. America has been provoking Iran for a very long time. You have, never, you have never won a war, America. And if you have to pick up and run from Afghanistan, you should have come out a war. If Afghanistan man them with slippers and old bicycle, trace you out in your tankers, it's time for you, America, to stop spending money on war. Let me show you why America is not going to win in Haiti. And they darn well know it. The year was 2018. Most of Haiti was protesting against their government. The anger was against this man, Jovenel Moise. He was then the president of the country. On November 13, the focus was on the capital, Port-au-Prince. Right next to the parliament, there's a famous slum. It's called La Saline. Around four in the afternoon, a police truck arrived there. The locals did not know why. Maybe the cops were trying to end the gang wars. If so, it was good news for them. But what happened next was blood curdling. The men went on a shooting spree. They knocked on doors, dragged people out and shot them, all in broad daylight. And soon the gangs joined in. In 24 hours, around 21 civilians had been killed. Not gang members, not criminals, ordinary civilians. They were killed. In the next few days, that number went up to 71. Around Annie seven Jones, women were it. raped and 400 houses were gutted. It's still not clear why this happened. Some say the police were actually gangs in fake uniforms. Others say the cops joined hands with the gangs. The question is why? Possibly to deter protests in La Salle. But either way, one thing is clear. The La Saline massacre 
was not a one-off. Last year, 5,000 Haitians died in street violence, gangs have overrun the capital, and the government is nowhere to be seen. But how did things get so bad? Why are Haitian gangs so powerful? Time for a flashback. Hollywood may tell you otherwise, but gangs are not flashy, fashionable, or businesslike. They're born out of one thing, and that is chaos. Where there is rule of law, gangs have no power. Where there isn't rule of law, gangs have a lot of power. It's as simple as that. You can guess which camp Haiti belongs to. Its history is riddled with chaos. Some of it can be blamed on Western colonizers, but the rest is homegrown. Let's start with the 15th century. In 1492, Christopher Columbus landed in the Caribbean. He found resources and wealth there. So like any good European, he claimed it for his king, the king of Spain. Thus, the Caribbean became a Spanish colony. Around 200 years later, it was divided. The western half, including Haiti, was given to France. The French brought African slaves to Haiti. They plundered the land for sugar, rum, and coffee. France kept getting richer. Haiti kept getting poorer. So in 1791, the slaves decided to fight back. They were led by this man, a former slave, Toussaint Louverture. The Haitians fought hard for freedom. In 1803, they defeated Napoleon's army. It was the first successful slave revolt in history. And they did so alone. The United States next door was no help. In fact, from 1801 to 1809, the US cut off aid to Haiti. Thomas Jefferson was president then, and he himself was a slave owner. So Jefferson thought, what if the Haitian revolt inspired American slaves? So he said, no aid. The U.S. would only recognize Haitian statehood in 1862. France did so much earlier, in 1825. But they also imposed a harsh deal on Haiti. Normally, you would expect colonizers to pay reparations. But France did the very opposite. They asked Haitians to pay reparations. And the rates were so high, it was impossible to repay. So what did Haiti do? They took loans from French banks to pay the money. Loans from French banks to pay the French. It's often called Haiti's double debt. Now, the point of the story is very simple. Haiti was never given a chance. Its economy was first crippled by colonialism and then by the double debt. Guess how long it took Haiti to repay these loans? 122 years. The last payment was made in 1947. So the start was pretty bad. Now we come to the 20th century. Another invader set its eyes on Haiti the United States of America. From 1911 to 1915, Haiti was in a flux. Seven presidents were assassinated or removed from office. So the neighboring US was spooked. What if a European power invaded Haiti again, maybe Germany or France? It would be a major setback to the US. So Washington decided to act first. In 1915, President Woodrow Wilson sent US soldiers to Haiti. Thus began the American occupation. It would last until 1943. Even after the US left, their influence stayed. They backed politicians in Haiti. One such leader was Francois Duvalier, AKA Papa Doc. As the name suggests, he was a doctor. He was called Papa Doc. After the Americans left, he entered politics. In 1950, he went underground after a military coup. That junta would rule for six years. Then in 1957, elections were held. Papa Doc ran a very popular campaign and he was elected president of Haiti. This was a very important moment in the country's history. Under Papa Doc, the gang culture emerged, mostly thanks to one group, the Toto Makut, basically the bogey men. You see, Papa Doc did not trust the army. So he reduced the number of soldiers in Haiti. Instead, he formed his own civilian armed group, the Toto Makut sort of like his own personal security. We're talking about a big group here. The Tonto Makut had some 25,000 fighters and their job was quite simple. Target Papa Doc's enemies, crush all dissent and spread fear among the general public. And they did so pretty well. The Makut went on a killing spree in Haiti. By some accounts, they killed 60,000 people. In 1964, Papa Doc declared himself president for life. In 1971, he died. So his son, Jean-Claude Duvalier, became president. 
aka Baby Doc. The US supported both these men. They gave them aid worth $900 million. That's $900 million in the 1970s. It's worth a lot more than it is today. And you know what happened to this money? Most of it was siphoned away. The Duvaliers enriched themselves with the aid money. Meanwhile, Haiti's economy crashed. Less than a dozen families had all the wealth and they supported anyone in power. There was a glimmer of hope in 1986. That's when Baby Doc was forced out of office. The Tonto Makut were also disbanded. But one crucial mistake was made. They were not disarmed. Their weapons were not taken away. So you had 25,000 fighters lose on the streets. Then in 1990, elections were held, the first free elections in Haiti's history. They were won by this man, Jean Bertrand Aristide. He was a former priest and leftist leader. But his rule was... Skills. Friendships. Smile. He was a former priest and leftist leader. But his rule was off to a bad start. In 1991, the military ousted him. So the U.S. decided to intervene once again. They sent soldiers to reverse the coup. And in 1994, Aristide was back. He was now very suspicious of the military. So he decided, no more army. That's right. Under Aristide, Haiti disbanded its army. Instead, civilian armed groups were created. These fighters would be loyal to Aristide. They would control the streets of Haiti for him. It worked for a couple of years, but Haiti's oligarchs did not like Aristide's leftist politics. So they organized protests against him. In 2004, he was forced to flee the country. So now you had multiple armed groups with nothing to do. No orders to follow, no missions to carry out, and no leader to report to. All they had was weapons. You can guess what happened next. A total plunge into anarchy. Haiti's local gangs evolved into crime syndicates. They sold drugs, traded weapons, and terrorized people. Why didn't later governments do anything about it? When to fight gangs, you need a military, and Haiti does not have one. In 2017, Jovenel Moise re-established the army. But guess how many soldiers it had? Just 500. The police are a different story, though. Haiti has around 15,000 police officers, but their weapons are quite useless. Some of them carry the same rifles that were used by the U.S. soldiers in 1915. Meanwhile, the gangs are high-tech. They use automatic guns smuggled from the U.S. So Haitian governments were helpless. In fact, some leaders depended on the gangs. They used the gangs to enforce their rule. It was a dangerous and reckless policy. Add to that the natural disasters. Haiti was struck by an earthquake in 2010. Around 300,000 people were killed. In 2016, a hurricane swept through Haiti. Some 850 people were killed. These disasters crippled the state infrastructure. They allowed these gangs to gather more power. And now they look unstoppable. Around 200 gangs operate in Haiti. Around half of them are based in the capital. The G9 Alliance is one of them. It is led by a former police officer called Jimmy Sheridzia, a.k.a. Barbecue. The G9 has a lot of former soldiers and cops. Another gang is the G-PEP. It's apparently linked to Haiti's opposition party. The G-PEP is a rival of the G9. Another gang is 400 Mawozo. It's said to be the largest group in Haiti. Its leader is currently in a U.S. prison. This year, he pleaded guilty to smuggling firearms. Now, the U.S. has an interest in stabilizing Haiti. They're not ready to send soldiers, but they are ready to fund a multinational mission. And where will the soldiers come from? Kenya is offering 1,000 soldiers. Benin has offered 2,000, but the plan is yet to be given final clearance. Even if it is cleared, there's no guarantee of success. After all, the gangs are based in Haiti. They will have some home advantage. Plus, foreign intervention has been the root cause of Haiti's problems. Can more intervention solve it? These are questions the global community must ask. It could take years, if not decades, for Haiti to solve this problem. Let me say, America, you are not and will never be a solution to any problem in this world. You create them. It's in your economic interest, America, to keep other countries in turmoil. America and France must get out of black people's business. Not even the white 
populous, support your hegemonic and colonial behavior anymore. Why is black people not standing up? You think white people are being silent to their leaders' behavior? Beat and teach. Media call you meeting your God in a church. Wagwan. Dr. Scar. Big Bossy. Easy Holder. Beat and teach. Wagwan. Wagwan. Welcome. Welcome. Who else have I seen? Join. I want to show you a small clip of civil disobedience. Because Jamaican people think so you must always be obedient to government. I only want to stand up in the Jamaicans, Cynthia B. I only want to stand up. People across the world is stand up. Because there's a silence from our government which they're signing away our sovereignty. All countries' sovereignty, those of which, whichever government decide to do it. Signing away our sovereignty to the World Health Organization and by extension, the body under the World Health Organization, which is the World Health Assembly, which will become the one world government. The, con the, the great control come in. Jamaica, JamaicanTV.com. J, Lady J Love, how are you? And the quicker you wake up, EM, and start your pushback, Jamaica. Earl Rankin. 
Brenda, Brenda, how are you? Is the more you will save yourself and your democracy. Your silence is a sleepwalk into one of the worst dictatorial control the free world is yet to see. Look at what civil disobedience means. How many more people need to die before Labour stands up and does something? There's already 30,000 dead people in Palestine and the bodies keep piling up. How many more? 100,000? A million? A billion? The policies they advocate for, not revoking new oil and gas, keeping selling weapons to Israel, will result in the death of millions. There are children starving in Gaza. You can see their bodies, they come out mummified, skin wrapped over their bones, it's horrifying. How much longer do we have to see this? We won't stand for this. This party's contempt for life has finished it. The Labour Party is finished. And we're now in resistance. And we won't stop. We won't stop until we get what we want. The resistance in Britain say, the resistance in Britain say they will not stop until they get what they want. Will you stand up for something, Jamaica? The diaspora, one thing with the British, they are not afraid of anything when you come to go, they go demonstrate for them rights. Arrest is the last thing on their mind. In fact, demonstrators in this country likes to break the law. It's a challenge to the status quo. And for those of you who have just joined, if you have not heard before, if you were sleeping last night, the story broke while some of us was asleep. There was a hostile takeover. The Jamaican diaspora intervention, diaspora crime prevention and intervention task force registered and took over the Global Jamaican Diaspora Council. They are about to issue cease and desist notice. Therefore, Brown and Security, well gone, Darty White. The government and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade can no longer use that name, can no longer use that logo, the logo which they have been in his fit over for a few months now as to who has the right to use it and who should not use it. They have been slapped embarrassingly across the face, operating and representing the diaspora for 20 years, unregistered, undocumented, illegal in a foreign Jamaican, Global Jamaican Diaspora Council. That big chess move last night will send the ministry scrambling, will send the government even on a Sunday morning when they should be at Stella Morris giving their offering. I'm sure they're scrambling now because they will have to do something quick and fast to save the embarrassment and to save their conference if it goes ahead in June this year. So that was a breaking story last night. The Dirty 30, Rupert Francis, Carlos Gray, Rattigan, Herb, and others struck in the dead of night, leaving the government with no choice other than to scramble.
And of course, there was the breaking serious development across the Middle East last night, Real Black Woman, where Star Wars played out over the skies of Israel last night with the retaliatory attack from the Iranian Revolutionary Guard for, and as a response to the attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus earlier this month. I want to thank you all very much for being here with me this unusual time. Mama Nita said about World Health Forum, World Economic Forum, Free to Focus 2025 agenda. No fear, just prepare. Mm. I want to thank you all for being here with me and this unusual time on a Sunday. I'm going out now to get the rest of the sun in the park because London is quite sunny today. And if it's one thing with us this time of the year, it's the end of our hibernation period where we can all come out from under the covers and start to grace the roads and the parks. So thank you very much for being here. I won't be here tonight. I have some plans. However, join me back here tomorrow morning for the at a glance. Hopefully by then, hopefully by then we will hear something from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade and from those of the unregistered Global Jamaican Diaspora Council. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us on this uh, Sunday evening. If you are on the Eastern time, good morning. Thank you.